back today, and today we're going to focus on uh, basically the effect of solvent uh, and solvent quality, or whatever solvent that we're doing on polymer chain MSD. It should be RMSD, but again, it's just the difference between this and this. We can figure that out. We don't need any help on that <laughs> math. We don't need mathematics for that situation. Anyways, so we've kind of uh, talked a little bit about this in class previously. I think people have a really good kind of um, conceptual understanding of this, but just to kind of emphasize it again, we can put our polymers in solvents. So it could be water, alcohol, organic solvents, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, blood, anything that you kind of put a polymer in, uh, saliva. Uh, but so the solvent can actually uh, really drastically affect our size of our polymer chain. So in good solvents, we are going to want to maximize our interaction with the solvent. So when we talk about favorable enthalpic interactions, we're going to talk about um, basically this epsilon m m, which is basically talking about the enthalpic interactions between monomer 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 enthalpic interactions between monomer and solvent and solvent and interactions between solvent and solvent. So that is what we are going to kind of uh, be working with here. And that is uh, basically <laughs> kind of uh, what we are going to kind of talk about today. So remember, the fundamental expression in this course, and this is all, all these interactions follow enthalpy. So according to Gibbs, we are going to try to figure out, do these enthalpic interactions, do they decrease our enthalpy enough to justify uh, basically a change in that polymer, that random coiled shape. So either going into a fully extended state to maximize some interactions or to completely coil up, collapse, and basically uh, <laughs> to coil up and collapse, and again, pay that entropy penalty to avoid basically some unfavorable interactions uh, as well. So we are going to uh, yeah talk about that uh, a lot. So again, this combination combina uh, competition between decreasing uh, your... We always want to maximize and increase conformational entropy, but there will be times when the enthalpic cost of, uh, of basically collapsing or extending are, or the enthalpic benefits, uh, I should say, are going to outweigh that cost in your entropy. So we'll talk about that a lot, and we've kind of talked about it a lot in this class uh, previously. Good solvent, extend, the polymer extend, maximize those good interactions between our monomer and solvent, so these favorable interactions. So for a good solvent, EMS is really, 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 really low and negative. Um, bad solvent, polymer is gonna call, doesn't want to interact with the solvent. So for a bad solvent, our EMS is really large, high, and instead our monomer-monomer interactions are much more favorable. Uh, so it will want to fold in on itself, collapse to minimize those interactions with the solvent. So in the theta condition, theta solvent, which is our ideal chain, uh, model condition or in the melt when you're just mixing uh, basically a polymer with itself. Uh, so that's kind of the condition of a theta solvent. So basically you can kind of, the solvent is equivalent to your monomer unit as well. So the enthalpy of mixing is basically zero. So our delta H is equal to zero in this ideal solution, this ideal state. Why? Because again, the interaction between interacting with the monomer with itself is basically zero. The interaction between a monomer and solvent, where the solvent's the same thing as the monomer, that's going to be zero. And solvent-solvent is also zero. So all of those <laughs> enthalpies uh, basically go to zero. So uh, it will not change, uh, basically the excluded volume of the polymer will not change upon adding a theta solvent. Uh, so we'll get into that more a little bit later. So we can kind of quantify uh, the solvent quality using this kind of uh, parameter alpha. So alpha is a nice parameter. Um, it is very, very straightforward and uh, somewhat simple. So basically, it's a measure of what is your R squared distance uh, of your polymer in solution compared to in the theta solvent. So if I'm in a good solvent, I know that my R squared is larger than in my theta solvent. So alpha is going to be greater than 1 for a good solvent. So, <laughs> or my alpha, uh, exactly. Alpha is going to be greater than 1 for a good solvent. My alpha uh, squared is going, or my alpha is going to be less than one for a bad solvent, and my alpha is going to be equal to one for our theta solvent. So that's basically kind of what we're dealing with here. So 
that is our alpha uh, squared values. So again, you kind of see the schematic of our picture of solvent in, solvent out, theta solvents. Uh, again, if we have a good solvent, we're going to extend. So our R squared is going to increase compared to our let's see, R squared in the theta. So again, in your theta solvent here. And uh, if we look at our, excuse me, alpha, our, our, if we're in a bad solvent, we're going to collapse. So your R squared is going to decrease compared to your R squared, excuse me, R squared. So uh, finish up basically this discussion and let's talk and just kind of remind ourselves about these kind of enthalpic interactions and how they kind of uh, come into play. So again, when we think about enthalpic interactions and whether they are good or favorable or bad or poor or unfavorable, we have our monomer monomer interactions, our monomer solvent interactions, and solvent solvent interactions. So three of them. So we want low negative energy. So for a good solvent, MS, uh, so for a good solvent, we know that the monomer and solvent like each other. So we know, so I'm going to just do this, good, bad, and theta. So for a good solvent, I know that I'm going to do another column here. Monomer solvent, monomer, monomer, and then, sorry for being cramped here. So for a good solvent, I know that this value is very, very negative because monomer solvent interactions are favorable. For this, monomer monomer should be zero. And solvent solvent, again, assuming that they're exactly the same, they shouldn't, it should just be kind of like an ideal case that they're just mixing with each other, so it shouldn't really matter at all. For a bad solvent, though, we know that this interaction is very, 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 very high and positive. So our monomer monomer interactions are much more favorable. So the polymer will want to collapse in on itself because it wants to maximize uh, this. It doesn't want to pay that these bad kind of energy penalties associated with uh, monomer solvent interactions. So it wants to collapse to minimize the number of these interactions. There will still be some of those interactions, but that's why it wants to kind of collapse and pile in on itself. And then finally, for the theta case, all these are just zero because the monomer and solvent are effectively equal. So that's why we have our delta H equal to zero in that case. So much, much more on this. We're going to get into this. You're going to calculate all these values. You'll be um, basically Gibbs energy experts up in this class. Uh, so uh, next time, we will get into quick uh, physicist ideal chain model, some radius of gyration issues. Uh, again, really, really good concepts, but a um, little bit, uh, I think a little bit beyond the scope, probably won't be uh, as covered as these other models. So uh, keep that in mind as you're preparing for the exam. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.